Hello again, and welcome to Channel 36. Good evening, Ian. Good evening, Lorraine. We have a very interesting show tonight, and we've been ch chatting here before the show started. And Ian McDonald has a business called We Love Cats and Dogs. <laughs> and being in the WeHo area, this is the perfect place because we're animal lovers and there are children and everything. And I thought this would be a terrific guest to have on the show. Very interesting. And Ian is a cat behaviorist, right? Yes. Okay. How would you define that? I mean, I know what behavior is and everything, but regarding cats and everything, the same as okay. with humans? It's, it is a lot of, I guess, the similar sort of behavioral observations that um, I guess you, you'd apply in psychology, but it's just understanding exactly how cats have a world view of what's going on in their life. They relate to each other and to us in a certain way. They're very driven by the smell. Uh, they're very driven by the environment that they live within. So you can see big fluctuations in cats' behaviors based on who they're living with, where they're living with, what other cats or dogs they're living with. And then you got other influences as well, like diet, you know, good, bad, whether or not they're, you know, sharing litter boxes. So many things affect the way a cat will behave. And then, of course, you got their personality on top of that. Oh, they all have different personalities. Very much and I so. told him I have a couple of cats. They're very unique, very unique. And, you know, what gets me upset sometimes is most people, a lot of people don't like cats. A lot of people they, don't understand cats. They don't understand them, and then they think, oh, a cat isn't like a dog. Yeah. Because a dog gives you more love. I said, on the contrary, when I come home at night, my cats are by the door waiting for me. Yeah. And they're coming up and they're going around my legs, they're meowing and want me to pet them and everything yeah. and take their paw and go to my arm and it goes down like this, so they want me to love them. Yeah. They there's, show affection. There's that saying, um, you know, dogs have owners or best friends and cats have staff, you know. <laughs> they, they do show love, but cats, we tend to anthropomorphize their behavior. So when they rub up against us, we're like, oh, they love me. But it's also a very functional thing where they let a little bit of drool come out the side of their mouth, and then they rub it onto the receptors, the glands here, and then they reabsorb. So they're marking and reading all the time that they're doing this on you. So that, as well as the love that they also have for you. So it's a, it's a mixture of all of them. In regards to how it's going down on that given moment, that's a thing that cat behaviorists know what to look for. So there's uh -huh. another guy named uh, Jackson Galaxy a lot of people have heard of. You know, he's, he's you know, a huge part of the learning that I've had along the way as well as so many others as well, as well as just growing up with lots of animals. Yeah, but like this, when you grew up, yeah. how many animals? I guess you were surrounded by a lot of animals, right? We had a lot of cats. Uh, we had a few dogs. Um, you know, we lived in a suburban area, so it didn't always end well for some of the cats and dogs. We did the outside. Uh, my parents allowed the cats to go outside. As an adult, I don't allow my cats to go outside. Oh, neither do I. No. They're indoors. If, I, I don't want that. If you live in a city, it's responsible to keep them inside. I don't want them because they'll get hurt. They People will get care. hurt. So Coyotes, abusive. Roads, yeah. Tell me, what do you think of all this abuse going on with animals? I cringe when I get on my phone, my cell phone, uh -huh. and see what's going on in the world. Why? How could people do this? It's one word, compassion. Um, if people don't have, uh, you know, have, if they've not lived an experience or if they can't put themselves in the, in the shoes of the other creature, whether it's human or animal, then, you know, that's what's lacking typically. I actually got a call today from a lady who wanted to know how to help a dog that's on a chain in a yard in a very nice area in the Hollywood Hills basically being neglected night and day. It's in the one spot, she doesn't know if it gets fed, all of the other neighbors are upset, and this dog is just barking like what she feels is a cry for help. And I said, look, this is what you do, this is how you go about it. Uh -huh. Be mindful it can cause a rift too. If you're the person who complains, you know, you can cause a rift in the neighborhood. So maybe gather up all of your other neighbors and bring them on as an advocacy. Yeah, and see and exactly, because right away somebody could try to sue or say mind your own business or something like that. The first thing she said is she said I know they have guns in that house and I was like well yeah, definitely that's be careful. Scary, so, yeah. 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 It's like I don't know if you saw on Facebook. Oh, it's so upsetting. It's I mean 
two young men cut the ears off of two dogs now. I mean, they should cut their ears off. Yeah. Something has to be done. Something has to be done about this. I mean, I signed petitions and mm -hmm. everything like that, but uh, it's getting worse and it's not getting better. There is a problem the, with um, the perception of value of life. Yeah. Just co complete disparity in the assertion that it's just a dog or it's just a cat. Um, you know. Well, excuse me, doesn't it have to do with the person too because they don't think too much of themselves? It does, and look, they, we could go really deep into the rabbit hole here. Typically, right. you know, when I see people, I, I have a passion for human psychology as well. I'm not trained, but I have a passion for observing it. And when I see people over-asserting in certain ways, I can read into what's happened to them. You know, I'll see someone who's looking really tough it's very possible that guy was beaten up and uh -huh. he wants to now assert the pufferfish syndrome where keep away from me here are my spikes right you know and, and you see the psychology that works as a i guess a overcompensation against what happened back there and we all do that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. animals do that in ways as well but differently animals don't have the um humanistic rationalization that we have that go completely goes against common sense at times. Well, since you're a cat behaviorist, what's the difference from a cat behaviorist to a, a cat psychologist or a cat psychic, do you think? Well, cat psychics, I don't know enough about. Um, I mean, energetically, I understand um, psychicism, I guess it would be the word. If somebody can attune themselves to that frequency, and do they pick up the energy from that's the cats? Do you that's think they could read their minds? Like I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I would love to believe. I just don't know because there's no way that we can ever quantify that. I kind of do the same thing, but without the psychic element. So there is a level of energy about it, but it's more for me logic. Well, how do you direct? How do you uh, give me a, a, an example? Okay, I'll, of I'll one come pet. to your house. I'll come to your house. The first thing I would look at is how many cats if it's one cool all right that's a, a lot easier for me okay. to work out what's going on if there's a problem mm -hmm. if there's two okay if there's two and there's a problem it's very likely that the problem is the other cat if it's not the other cat it's the other cat and the environment oh i just thought of something go ahead mm, yeah i just we thought of something just what you said so cats are territorial even if they're siblings at the start they are also i mean there's so many levels to this they're driven by smell so imagine that I've introduced myself to you and we know each other. Now imagine that we were cats for a second and all of a sudden you put on some perfume. You might as well be a different person. I don't recognize you anymore. Uh -huh. Even if you look familiar, the ruling of the nasal sense is so high that you can be siblings, but if you've come back with a different smell, you're a stranger to me. And you'll see that as well when cats, they'll smell, smell, and then they'll go <sighs> Now that, <sighs> that hiss, it's a knee jerk. It's kind of like oh. if you get pepper up your nose and you go, <laughs> right? So people see that and they go, oh, the cat's being aggressive. Right? I have this all the time where people are like, my cat's hissing at people and they're scared. And it's not exactly what's happening. It's just, it's, it's an unfamiliar smell. It could be a threat and they go into a state of alertness. And you'll Maybe see they don't like, I burn incense. Oh yeah, no, probably not. Probably they don't not. like it. No. Ah. Just a hot see, tip as well, uh, incense, I, you should actually always burn when nobody's in the environment because it can have the carcinogenic. I just found out something new. Yeah, it's, it's smoking of a form. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And another thing I mentioned to you before we start on the show tonight, that there's a female cat outside. Yes. My male cat. And sometimes he would cry and whine and he would go to his sister, which of course he doesn't know that's his sister, and he'll go and he'll lick her mm -hmm. and she'll claw at him. She doesn't want to be bothered. Yeah. You know, she doesn't want any sexual things or anything like that. Yeah. But when she's ready, she goes to him yeah. and then he walks away. It's interesting to watch. There's, there's so many nuances so, that it may not just be an expression of love or affection. Cats can be all up in each other's spaces for many different reasons. Uh -huh. So, um, you mentioned that he's not cut. So, if there is another cat outside. Yeah, he's not cut, right. If there is another cat outside and she's on heat, she has a very specific song, a song that he knows instantly. Okay, that's why he's by the door. That's probably and if I don't let lying. him out, 
That's when he gets mad at me and does things. If I were you, I wouldn't let him out. Oh, I never let him out. He's never been outside at all. If she's uncut and he's uncut, Only to the doctor, then we've got kittens. Which is so, yeah. No, 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 no. So the whining, that's probably why, yeah. That's the answer, I think. Yeah. And he doesn't get from his sister what he wants, incest. Terrible midnight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that's why maybe I'm getting all these different behaviors and reactions from him. Yeah. And to know exactly what he's saying, um, that's what a cat behaviorist does. Um, frequently I'll say, I'll, I'll see people and they will say, oh, my cat loves me, this is happening. Oh, my cat loves the other cat, this is happening. Right. And then I'll be like, hang on, hang on. How are they cuddling? Uh -huh. What's happening during the cuddles? Where are their ears? What's the tail tip doing? Yeah, where they're eating, where do you have the litter box and everything? Or more, more within that cuddle, because I had a case this week where people were like, oh, you know, they're, they're friends. They're not friends. I looked at one video of them cuddling and it was very clear instantly that these two cats are having a rift, if you will. There's territorial yeah. issues within the, the space and there's only one litter box. Okay, see what I did? Yeah. Years ago I had one litter box, then I got two. Yeah. That's okay. Good. That's good. But that doesn't seem... Question. The Does the litter box have a hole for them to go through or is it nice and open? I don't have a cupboard because I heard don't have a cupboard, they want it open. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Absolutely. Okay. The moment you create a, a small opening, you're creating a small gateway that's very easily marked. So if the bully cat takes that litter box, then comes over and marks this litter box, the other cat has nowhere to go and that's where it'll end up on the carpet, oh. on the couch. So that's why, because she comes over in his box where he likes to go and he doesn't like that, so things could happen because of that. You'll oh. always have one cat that's the bully. I don't know how in you my can keep one in one box. It's impossible, especially your work all day long. They're going to go where they want to go. Well, you can have a really big box. That's an option. <laughs> big, but if you have a big box, yeah. they could still go yeah. in the box that they shouldn't go in. Agreed. And Agreed. vice versa, right? Yeah, and that's what a cat behaviorist does, is I come in, I look at your environment, I look at your cats, okay. I look at your regime, and then I look at what's missing from whichever cat has the lowest status, the lowest esteem. If that cat isn't having uh, fulfillment of what needs expressing in their life, and cats do have needs from play through... Um, just like people. Feeling worthy, yeah, just like people. But I give them lots of love. Well, love is But that's good. from me. Yeah, it is. That's different. What he wants it is from his species, I think. Agreed. So, you know, something as simple as giving them levels of height and altitude, um, allowing cats to be up high can really bolster their confidence. And even as far as food, they're, they're difficult with food sometimes. I've tried everything. They turn their nose up. Yeah. I've tried all different things. Then I find something that they like, and now it's fine. Yeah. For this. So tell me, what is the oddest behavior that you have worked with Oof. in a cat or a dog? I mean, for me, oddest? Or the hardest to deal with? Always aggression. For cats, it's always aggression. Once a cat has learned how to deal with the world aggressively, yes. it's very difficult to shape. Um, you've heard that term. Dogs are easier then to work with? No, dogs, dogs with aggression are very much the same category of difficulty. You've heard the term hardwiring, right, up here? When, when somebody becomes hardwired in a habit, the way that your brain's neurons work is exactly like that. So when these, these little dendrites are reaching out and connecting the neurons, uh -huh. once a habit is formed, they fuse. So after a long period of time, they do actually hardwire. So certain habits and traits become hardwired habits. And once an animal's learned to deal with the world aggressively, it can be very difficult and very painstaking and patience requiring to work through that long term. And it's always long term in my experience with dogs. With cats, you know, it can be, if you can minimize it with cats, you're doing great. But frequently with cats, once they've learned that way, it's it's a real tough slog to, you know, create that space where they don't have that aggression. And the first thing I check for if a cat's being aggressive is the environmentals. So if there's a stressful environment, if there's multiple cats with single cat litter or, you know, issues of territory, I'll split that up immediately. Now if the, the aggression continues, that's when we start to look at a cat that's hardwired to aggression. And that's rare, but when it comes up, it's, it's a nuisance. And I'm very careful with litter. Oh, I change it often, and yeah. I clean it. Then I think, well, he looks up at me. Then I think, well, maybe he doesn't like the litter. 
So I changed another. I've used all types. So I have one now that I'm sticking to. I tried everything with him, but mm -hmm. I noticed that the female cat lays on my lap and she comes to me like this. If he comes near, she'll hiss at him. Mm -hmm. So he gets upset with that. Now, now I re from he's what you're boy. telling me, I'm realizing a lot of things mm -hmm. of why he's doing what he's doing. From what you've just said, when you clean the litter box, he's probably annoyed at you because he's taken great effort to spray paint his smell all over that box. Oh, and so I, I would think that he would feel good because I'm going in and cleaning it, but he gets annoyed? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Imagine that uh, you're at school, you're six years old, you got this shiny new pencil case and you write your name on it and you slide those little letters in. Kid next to you comes, scribbles it out, takes it, changes the letters and says, no, it's mine. And then the teacher believes that person. Well, what Wouldn't are we going to do? Feel? I mean, I have to clean the litter box. Of course, of course. But you've got a bully cat. A cat that's learned over a long period of time to be the bully. How old is this cat? About 17 or 18. Old cats, new tricks, it's... Senility? Well, possibly, but possibly not. He may know exactly what he's doing. He knows. Oh, he's shrewd. So, oh, he's smart and yeah. he looks at me. 17 years of researching you. I'm, I'm sure he knows how to push the buttons and duck and weave. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're good. They're yeah, good. He gets jealous before she would sleep with me in the bed. Mm -hmm. I, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. And it's fine with her. Yeah. Okay, but he tries to get close to her again. She doesn't let him yeah, all the time. Probably because she's it's fine. All she's bad comfortable enough. by yeah. herself. She knows that he's there. Yeah. If she needs him, he's there. But gotcha. that's it. And do they snuggle? Hardly ever. Mm. I see them kiss. Like cleaning. She licks him, and he licks her. That can be passive. Again, we've just applied the human stuff to a cat behavior. Grooming can be a nervous trait. Okay. If one cat's nervous of the other that it might go wrong, it's not uncommon that you'll see that cat lick as a gesture of, hey, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool, right? And then, you know, he may so not... So cats really cuddle with each other? My cats never have really cuddled. I've never seen that. Cuddling is a human concept. So cats can sleep near each other if they're fine. Um, cats are really a solitude character. You know, they're, they're really solitary. They're... They're very independent. They're happy in what they do. Yeah, but they they tolerate each other, but they don't need to snuggle each other. So if they don't, are snuggling, then that's great. That's a good sign. But you know, within a cuddle, you can see so many little nuances that shows you that there's there's a hierarchy going on. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so you grew up having a lot of animals and everything. So you decided, hey, I'm going to go into this business. I love it. It was probably a little less of my own choice, honestly. Um, I've had a lot of animals actually from nature come to me. I I mean, in Australia we have bats called uh, flying fox and they, I'm not sure how... What state? They're... Minnesota? No, this is, I'm from Australia. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I saw that accent. I was yeah. going to ask you and everything. Yeah. I love that accent. I okay. Up on the East Coast So they Australia. have bats. Oh, I hate them. Well, they're called a bat, but they're, this is the funny thing is, they're, they're actually a flying fox and their most cl closest uh, relative is a monkey. So technically, flying fox. They're called flying fox. If you oh, Google them, they must them, look ugly or good. No, they're gorgeous. I think so. Anyway, they've you know got a little. They're adorable when you feed them bananas and they puff their little cheeks Ooh, out. Small or large? Big, very big. Their wingspan can get you know from my elbow. Like to an elbow. eagle? Size of an eagle, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, absolutely. But they're so dangerous. They're not. They, they eat fruit. They eat fruit. They just eat. I remember as a little girl growing up, they would say, stay away from the bats, they're going to get in your hair, and then you have to get your head all shaved off. And I would see these tiny little bats that would be at my doorway, yeah. near the light on top, uh -huh. and that would be so scary for me. Yeah. yeah. In I, the desert, the desert bats gotcha, gotcha. are like that. Yeah. We don't have too many of them here, anyhow. No, I never really saw real bats, I just saw those giant fruit fox, flying fox things. Yeah. Okay. So if you had to do it all over again and pick a business to go into, you would still pick the same business, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would. It's, it's very fulfilling. It's what I do. It's, um, it's something I'm good at. It's something that I get. It's something I feel confident about. I don't find that I ever have people who encounter issues with their animals that walk away, you know, 
with with questions still. I get great feedback on my help and all of the uh, the review yeah, sites. Because you help people. Yeah, and what's what's not fun about that? You get to hang out with it's animals and help their owners. And yeah, like I said, it's very fulfilling for you. It really is. And it's a challenge. It is a challenge. Depends on the animal, but um, yeah, that's what I said because you yeah. never know what you're going to come up against. Often it's a slam dunk. So many times I get there, I tweak a few things, and then they're like, "Oh, good." But um, every now and then you do have the challenge, and that's where it gets interesting. Okay, so when you go into a place, is it better? Do you tell the uh, the man or the woman in the house, "Please leave the room while I look around," no, and I absolutely not. No, if it's okay for them to stay in. Absolutely. When I train with dogs, or whether I'm doing cat behavior, having the people there who the cat lives with increases the confidence. Oh, really? So my goal is to move in as slowly as I can and to not bring a big energy and not be aggressive or alpha. Um, and then just, just sit down quietly in the corner and just, with cats, they have a behavior you've probably noticed where they, they blink their eyes slowly at you. Have you noticed that? Yes. It's called an eye smile. Or I call it like an eye smile. But basically, that's a cat allowing you to know that we're cool, we're cool. Oh, and really? When they blink their eyes like that? Yeah, yeah. You'll notice that any time that they're comfortable, they'll do it. Any time they're not comfortable, they will definitely not do it. It's a very communicative. So if you ever want to get cool with a cat quickly, that's what you do to them. Oh. If you put your chin down and you just sort of give your eye, you know, how me, fascinating! You know, just some sim oh, simple body language that. like that will put me in a lower status than them by saying we're cool and this is your place, and that tends to get the cat, the cats really cool quickly with me. So. Like people. When you're with someone with a date, you give them the eyes or something like that brings you closer. <laughs> well, nobody wants to feel threatened. I know. So, it's yeah. a connection you're making, exactly. right? Exactly. So. And that's their connection. How about a dog? To make the connection, would you do the same thing? Um, dogs can the... take eye contact a little bit differently. Um, direct but... eye contact with the wrong dog can really be a, yeah, not just don't do but it. But what's the best contact to make with a dog to get close to a dog? Bring it why, out. Why do people well, say... They take the hand, let them smell the hand. Okay. The way you just did it is, first thing, I'd bring those fingers in because if there's a dog that's going to snap, you don't want him grabbing any of these. So oh. the fingers always need to be in, and I do recommend putting your thumb inside so there's actually nothing to grab other than one fist. I've so. never seen that because everybody goes like this, and I go like this too, which is bad. Yeah. I, yeah. I will pull people away and say, make a fist, even if it's a friendly dog. If I'm training everyone to do this, then we're saving people's fingers into the future. So always bring your fist down. Never go over the top. Never go straight for them. Always go in and under. Always. It's like when you see people go over the top of a dog. Big no-no. If that dog's aggressive, imagine what that would look like to you, this hand coming down over you. Oh, so you go underneath. Always so go in and he under. doesn't see that big hand because then he worries about what's going to happen, right? Well, Maybe get scared. If he's a rescue that had a terrible upbringing, absolutely that's a possibility. And you just don't know. People make the mistake of seeing a dog going, oh, cute, a dog, and just, you know, covering that dog in their own energy and just asserting themselves onto this dog without asking the right questions. Is she friendly? Do you mind if I say hello? Right. Is she aggressive? Will she bite? You know, just, just basic stuff. And most of all is, can I say hello? Some people are in a rush when they're walking their dogs. They've got 15 minutes before work and, you know, they want to be nice to you. But it's it's nice etiquette to always ask, can I say hello? Because if, if it's a no, you should just respect that for whatever reason. It's, it's, it's like someone else's child. You don't just go and touch it. So mm -hmm. there is an etiquette that I feel, if everyone knew, there'd be so much more harmony within the, the animal Isn't community. that amazing? Absolutely. It's the world, it's like the people and animals. It's harmony, connection, yeah. love. Acceptance, Compassion. It's the same as with human beings, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. And it's a foundation is the same. The Absolutely. We forget that dogs have a personal space. So do cats. They have a personal space. And they're allowed within their own set of inalienable rights to determine who comes and goes within those spaces. Otherwise, whoosh, or bite with the dog. So yeah, yeah. So they use their gestures because they can't talk and everything like that. Yeah. I took a rescue dog uh, a few years back, and I was going to get it for my daughter. Gotcha. A dog for my daughter. Well, she didn't like it. And anyhow, they said you have to see this animal. You have to take this animal home. So the German Shepherd comes in, very sheep 
blissfully, you know, with yeah. the head down like yeah. this. Bless. And I felt so sorry for her. And the story was this. She was so abused, locked in the closet for over two weeks, beaten by this man, not fed and everything. And they want me to take this dog home. I took it home, though. Good but on. needless to say, I didn't even think what I was in for. <laughs> took her home, yeah. went to work. When I came home, everything was chewed up. Yeah. Everything was chewed up. And they said, you need a, a dog psychologist. I could honestly fix that in a okay. single session. So well, this was a lot of years ago. Yeah. And I said, OK. So they said, first thing you're doing, with what that dog went through, that dog should never be by itself. That yeah. dog needs to be somebody else. I don't care how much love you give that dog. So my mother was down the hall in another apartment. So she had a dog. Mm -hmm. So we kept the dogs together. Had no problem after that. But yeah. the problem that I had, yeah. every time taking that dog out for a walk, did she pull? She would see a man. Mm. She went ballistic. Yeah, right. I had to really hold her back. She would That's growl right. and growl. You know, that on that went on for about eight or nine years. Any man that kept by, it was terrible. I had to watch her closely. But it took all these years for her to surpass her emotions, what she went through, mm -hmm. just like it would be with a person. And I felt so bad. Yeah for it. So bad. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Sorry, that. <laughs> <laughs> so what else uh, happens with, with behaviors that we could tell the people or something that I should know too that is familiar? We went over the smells, how yeah. the cat reacts. I mean, I can go through cats and dogs really quite briefly. With cats, they need a sense of esteem, which is linked to altitude. So give them a cat tower to go up. If you've got two cats that are feuding, get two towers. Allow them their own space. If they're feuding, get them two litter boxes and feed them separate to each other so they can have their own space. And that's pretty much the goal of okay. most so, of the... So the I should stuff. have those poles for them to climb yeah. up or not necessarily? Yeah, I mean, it depends. Um, things that cats, I believe, need are uh, you know, direct exposure to sunlight. They need to see outside. They need to know that the outside world is in there. It links to their My esteem. place is very bright. Oh, good. Sun, very good. Sun, lots of sun. Then I would just say put a cat tower near the window. And it sounds like your cats are feuding, even if they're not making it too known. So what I would actually recommend is just get two similar and just put them far enough away, maybe on the either side of the window, so they can each have one. Well, what is it's a long window, mm -hmm. and they don't go at the window at the same time, I noticed. And when you say that, are they going to the same spot but at different times? Yes. There you go. See, it's She's territorial. Except for her. She is complacent. She is very comfortable no matter what she does. Uh -huh. She could care less. Gotcha. She picks her spot and she just lays there and she curls. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't curl. Yeah. I notice that. Gotcha. He lays out. She's very warm and I notice she curls up like a ball. Then it's possible she has the might but he wants to be the bully. Because yeah. if she knows that she's got the strength and she knows she can take him if it's required, then she doesn't have to be worried. But it sounds like he's presenting the challenge frequently. He's, he's bringing the challenge to her. Yeah, he's be? trying. He's yeah. tried so yeah. hard. But I all, tell me if I'm right or wrong, it's always better to have more than one pet. I wouldn't say or not. always. I wouldn't say always. In Tell me why. Cases, uh, again, we're talking about the personality of a cat. Sometimes I'll encounter cats that just don't want to have a bar of it. They really just would prefer like to be people alone. want to be alone, right? Exactly. So it just depends, honestly. And that's what I do. I look at the, the case that we have in front of us, and I do okay. my best to identify what's going on for that case for that, that client. So that's new too. Now, another thing which yeah. they say, they say, Cats see in the dark, so you don't have to let a light on at night. And then somebody told me, that's all wrong. No. Cats need a light at night, and they want a light on. Tell me the truth on that one. They can pretty much, I mean, anyone in photography will respect this. Their aperture, their iris, can pretty much go all the way out. I think there's a rating. I think it's maybe under 2 to 3% of the iris still remains. It's full exposure. It's literally just drenching the retina of this cat. Okay, so they see. Yeah, they, they see the light. They also see in a spectral um, range that's you know far outside of ours. We we have 
we can't see ultraviolet, we can't see infrared. And I believe that cats can actually go, you know, further than we can on the on the spectral uh, range. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so they're, they're pretty amazing. And their ears, phenomenal, phenomenal. So it's, I don't know if they actually use it the same way bats do, but cats in the dark, I mean, you can jump online, there's, there's night vision footage, you can see these guys, they know exactly where they're going. Yeah, those ears, even dog, the slightest sound, little yep. sound. Yep. And another thing, with toys on the floor, uh, I know there's so much to talk about. I say this all the time, <laughs> I go on and on and on. They say, Colors. They like certain colors in toys, and some colors they don't. What are the colors? Well, I don't know exactly what the colors, but that would make sense. When you do an eye test at the optometrist, there's a, a test where they put the red and the green, which is brighter. Have you ever done one of those at the optometrist? Yeah. We have certain frequencies right. that we're going to pick up at the strongest. Do you think a cats pick up with, or dogs, with bright lights? or? I don't know for sure, but red and green would actually make sense. And, you know, I have cats that happen to love their orange toys. So orange. I'm just guessing here. I don't actually know. I'm not a cat demologist here. So that would be guesswork for me completely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, I know that catnip in your toys is just send some bananas. So. I have a lot of cat toys and everything. Small ones. Anyhow. Mice, yeah. It's been great. Thank you. Okay. And uh, very informative. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure, uh, you know, our people watching, uh, this was interesting to you, and I hope it helped you with your animals at home, too. I know it's a big help to me. And uh, we'll just continue loving our gorgeous little pets and everything on our great picture there, which I adore. Wonderful. Okay, and let's just keep giving lots and lots of love to these animals because Always. they deserve it. Always. Okay, and I thank to WeHo Channel 36. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you, Julie. And thank you, Ian. Thank you, Lauren. We have to have you on again. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>